Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see the current affairs of 17th January 2022. In this lecture, we are going to discuss six topics which are very much relevant from our UPSC point of view. So in this lecture, we are going to try to understand the concepts which are given in four editorials and some important current affairs which have appeared in our Hindu newspaper today. So first topic, it is about storm warnings. Uh, warnings of a mega city collapse so actually this article which is mainly talking about this chennai okay chennai had been stuck under this star warnings so this article it is very important because this is the one important problem that we are facing not only in chennai and number of uh, cities which are also facing problems regarding this storm warnings and as well as impact of climate change so this article is important from environment and ecology which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. And next topic it is about predatory pricing. So this predatory pricing it is one of the important concepts that you need to know which is very important from our economy point of view. So here you need to understand what is predatory pricing and I will be explaining you one example to understand the concept and you have to know about recently what are the steps taken by the government. Okay and next topic is about a lifeline animal format. So actually this talk, this article which is mainly talking about Recently, one genetically modified pig's heart transplanted to human. Okay, so because of this, here we need to know about what are the concerns and what is the procedure mainly used. That procedure, you can get a mains question and even a prelims question from this topic. So this article will be important from your science and technology point of view. And next topic it is about super spreaders in the making. So this article is talking about super spreaders. Actually, this is festive season, right? So this is Sankranti season. So in this Sankranti season, you have many states they will be having their state-owned uh, related sports. For example, in our yesterday's lecture, we studied about Chilikattu. And today's lecture, we are going to study about uh, this roster, uh, roster sport of Andhra Pradesh. So this article it is important from health because whenever there is a, some types of uh, sports that are mainly conducting, Already you know that the number of cases are increasing in India, not only in India, throughout the world because of this new variants of France and as well as Omicron. So in this context, whether we need to go for this uh, groups and as well as uh, conducting of the sports or not. So this is one cause of concern that we need to focus on. And next topic it is about Incoys. Incoys help save money and environment. So here we are going to talk about some facts regarding this Incoys. So this will be important from our environment and ecology. And next topic it is regarding government talk and marital rape is a delay, delaying tactic. So this article which is mainly talking about marital rape. So which section of IPC talks about this? Section 375 IPC which mainly talks about this marital rape. So we are going to talk about some cause of concerns. Okay. So now let us try to see each and every topic in a very great detail. So now first topic here it is about storm warmings. Okay storm warmings of a mega city collapse so this article mainly talking about this chennai city so this article as i said it is important from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so why this article is in news so actually now we are experiencing this northeastern monsoon season or we can say like retreating monsoon so what happened here now chennai is under staggering rains from december 30 2021 so from December 30 onwards, Chennai it is experiencing this staggering rainfall. Okay, in this uh, repeated monsoon. Uh, so because of this uh, repeated rainfall in this Chennai, we are experiencing that repeated monsoon inundation, urban paralysis, which is mainly seen here. So this article which mainly says that. So because of this repeated monsoon inundation and urban paralysis, which is one of the remainder of political leaders that they are underestimating the risk of urban collapse okay so now there is some underestimating of a risk of urban collapse due to some extreme weather events so because of some extreme weather events we are seeing some uh, impacts that are mainly seen in these urban areas so as you all know here this chennai it is a capital city of tamil nadu and mainly contains international airport and it is also having a major seaport which is mainly grid locked after heavy rain at a tail end of northeast monsoon so in this northeast monsoon region so this international airport and major seaport which is mainly located in this Chennai region which has been grid locked okay so because of this what happened because of this inundation 
of this Chennai city. So majorly, so if you want to go for emergency hospital services, we will be calling ambulances. So what happened because of uh, water which is mainly stagnated on the main roads. So what happened here is the ambulances, they are sirens of wailing in this uh, in the still traffic and people are deserting vehicles to walk to rail uh, terminals and there is a rain which is mainly seen and workers who are going to work they are unable to return so these are some problems that we are mainly seeing and here also if you go back to 2015 there was a there was mainly floods that is mainly seen in this Chennai region so because of that that led to a nightmare so because of at present situation, we can recall the revived moment memories of this 2015 flood events of this Chennai as well. So if you're talking about this catastrophic 2015 floods, so it was an unprecedented event which mainly raised the expectations of major shift in the priorities for urban development. So here from this 2015 onwards, so whatever the memories we got okay we are mainly trying that this event should not repeat once again so because of this we are having immense community support and even there is active mobilization for change so in this context both cities they witnessed a regression as informality okay remain uh, informality remained a dominant loss so what are the laws which are present that are just present on the paper so they are not properly implemented here and because of there is no proper implementation of laws which are just on the paper so we are seeing there is some unsustainable changes okay unsustainable changes that are mainly seen in this urban environment okay and because of this permanent and allied construction allied development in this urban areas so these are mainly favoring the cost of ecology so if you're talking about some data which is given in this article according to report according to report on reforms in urban planning capacity in india so niti ayog cites the COVID-19 pandemic as a revelatory moment that mainly underscores the dire need of all the cities to become healthy cities by 2030. So this report of this Niti Ayog that is reforms in urban planning capacity in India. So it mainly cites that COVID-19 pandemic it is a one of the revelatory moment okay which mainly underscores the cities to become healthy cities by 2030. And if you're talking about this climate impacts so climate impacts are certain to affect the cities even more fundamentally and as well as permanently okay so this climate impact which is mainly having some effect on uh, both fundamental and as well as permanently and even niti ayog recommends that 500 priority cities okay 500 priority cities they need to be included they need to be included in a com in a competitive framework and we need to adopt participatory planning tools and even surveys and we need to finally focus on group discussions and in this group discussions we need to focus on what are the needs and what are the aspirations of citizens and we need to work on that okay we need to give more importance okay there is a considerable importance that should be given for uh, technological tools private sector talent and even mapping the strategies and finally we need to identify assets and as well as plans uh, plan strategy okay so this is the data which is given in this article so what is the need here so first one here is we need a central role for democratically elected local government okay so we need to give a central role for this democratically elected local government and finally so after giving this uh, a central role for this local governments for example municipalities in this urban areas so we need to focus on greater inclusion and as well as we need to focus on the sense of the community as well and all dimensions of a city's growth starting with affordable housing that plays a central role in adapting to future climate change okay so here we need to focus on affordable housing and in this housing also we need to focus on this biophilic designs and we need to use this green materials okay because if you are using most of the concrete means that will also leads to urban heat island as well and next important point here you need to know here is a top level department for climate change adaption is best suited mainly to serve as a unifier and we need to come up with some relevant departments of a state for example we need to come up with this housing and urban development and transport water supply energy land use public works irrigation and they need to work with local governments such that that will be helpful for sustainable development so this is just of this topic and i hope it is very much clear now let us try to see next topic it is regarding predatory pricing 
So here I selected this topic mainly to make you understand the concept of predictive pricing. So for example, if there is a market, okay, let us consider this example. I will be explaining this example such that you can understand what is the issue that is going on. Okay. For example, if you see in a market, so for example, I am going to a supermarket, for example, to buy so and so good. For example, let us take, I want to take this Colgate paste. So for 100 grams of Colgate paste, I need to pay 55 rupees. Okay. I need to pay 55 rupees. So this is the price that I need to pay. That is maximum retail price that you can see on the box of this Colgate paste. Then what happened? For example, if you see this is a manufacturing company of Colgate. So this manufacturing company of Colgate, which will be selling to the manufacturer, uh, selling to this wholesale, selling to the wholesaler at wholesale price. And this wholesaler will be selling that paste to retailers at, at some price. And retailers will be selling, uh, selling that Colgate paste to consumers at a retail price, right? So here, what happened? What is the issue here is, so recently, Recently, people, people uh, in some village, they are not even, uh, they are not going to get this uh, Colgate paste. Why? Because actually, man, here wholesalers, they will be giving retailers this Colgate at rupees of 40 rupees, for example. But what happened whenever we are having distal access, okay, distal access. So, these retailers, they are going directly to this whole, uh, this uh, manufacturers and they will be having some bond. And because of that, what happened to this OTT uh, or we can say like uh, digital markets, they are getting this, uh, this uh, Colgate paste at a rupees of 35. So because of this, what happened, this wholesalers, they are mainly doing strikes. Okay, they are not getting profit, so they are doing strikes. So this is the issue here. So normally this predatory pricing means uh, in market and in economy means, for example, there is a one shop. So in this shop, they are selling two pens. For example, two types of pens they are selling. First one is let us take that is India's made and next one is other countries made. So India's made pen here is for example rupees 5. Okay, rupees 5. And here Chinese they are also came to the same market and they are they started selling their pens. Okay, the cost of the pens and the quality wise everything it is similar to that of Indian pens. And the cost of this Chinese pens it is rupees 3. Okay, so the so cost of this Chinese pens here is rupees 3. So what happened if I'm going to market to buy pens? So the quality is same, okay? And what happened? I will be going for buying of this three rupees pens. So because of this, what happened? Demand for this pens will be decreasing. And finally, the producer of that pens will start decreasing their production. Finally, that will lead to closing of that so-and-so company. So this type of decreasing of price is called as predatory pricing. So this is one example that you need to remember regarding this predatory pricing. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you're talking about what is this predatory pricing means. So this predatory pricing, it is a short term strategy. Okay. Predatory pricing, it is a short term strategy. And this strategy, which is mainly adopted by some of the market chains with deep pockets to sustain short term losses and to reduce the price of their products below the average variable cost. For example, the price of pen should be 5 rupees. But what happened? The pen price will be sold at rupees, which is less than rupees 5. It is an average variable cost. So because of this, what happened? There will be the decrease in the demand for so and so product. Okay. So this is the one techno technique which mainly followed by majorly market gains. So this may lead to wiping out or uh, wiping out competition from the market and it could be determined to the consumers in the long run okay so this is about the meaning of this predatory pricing so we're talking about some important facts here here you need to understand so what are the steps are taken by the government so recently so recently a parliamentary panel on this consumer protection e-commerce rules 2020 so recently a parliamentary panel on the consumer protection e-commerce rules 2020 which has recommended that government should amend the rules to provide better protection to consumer rights and to stop unfair practices. So in the same market, if the pen which is mainly sold at a less price means that will lead to unfair trade. Okay. So here government need to take some steps mainly to prevent this or to stop this unfair practices. So recently parliamentary panel on this consumer protection e-commerce rule 2020, which mainly recommended that Government should amend the rules to provide better protection for the consumers and this one is to stop unfair practices. 
So if you're talking about what is this unfair practices, so while this e-commerce, while this e-commerce enterprises, they offer many benefits, the development of segmentations has rendered consumer, consumers vulnerable to the new forms of unfair practices. And there is also some unf unfair uh, trade practices like a uh, violation of uh, privacy, issues of attended grievances, etc. here. And there is also increase in the number of cases regarding fake reviews and unfair favoritism in the display of goods as well. So what are the key recommendations which are done by government? First one is they need to come up with a clear cut definition of what is the meaning of this unfair trade practice. And as well as government should spell out a practical legal remedy especially to tackle the issue. And as well as to fix a cap on delivery charges which may be levied by these e-commerce firms. And as well as they need to provide a legal provisions for violation of rules which is related to this misinformation. And next one is Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. They should issue broad guidelines for the fixation of delivery charges which is mainly charged by these market entities. Okay, so these are the some important recommendations which are mainly given. So if you see this infographic, you can understand what are the provisions for this e-commerce firms here. So later on in PDF, you can see this. And now let us talk about next topic. It is regarding recent transplant of pigs heart to human. And this mainly talks about highlights. Okay, so this article, it is important from our science and technology point of view, which mainly comes under our GS paper 3. So now let us try to talk about this topic and this topic will be important from our main point of view. So if you are talking about what is the context, so context here is, if you are talking about context, context here is University of Maryland, okay, University of Maryland School of Medicine, which mainly announced that it has successfully transplanted a genetically modified pig heart to patient with life threatening arrhythmia. Okay, so what is arrhythmia? Arrhythmia is a one of the cardiac disease. So in this arrhythmia, we can see irregular heartbeat will be there. Either it may be increasing of heart rate or decreasing of heart rate. So increasing of heart rate is called as tachycardia and decreasing of heart rate is called as bradycardia. So either we have either tachycardia or bradycardia. So this condition is called as cardiac arrhythmias. So one patient who is suffering from this cardiac arrhythmias to that patients here the University of Maryland School of Medicine they mainly successfully transplanted genetically modified pig heart to this patient. Okay. And if you are talking about what is, what is this arrhythmia, arrhythmia means there is an irregular heartbeat. It may be too quick or too slow here. And they mainly transplanted this pig's heart to the human by using this xenotransplantation. So xenotransplantation is a type of heterogeneous, heterologous transplant means means here one species organ which is transplanted to another species here one species is here, here is pig and second one is humans okay so pigs heart which mainly transplanted to human so this type of transplantation of living cells tissues or organs from one species to another species it is called as xenografts or xenotransplants so if you're talking about procedure how this xenotransplants will be done so first one is a small head okay small head means group a group of this genetically engineered pigs is being raised and these pigs they will be having 10 of their genes are genetically modified and these genes are very much helpful for reduction of this rejection. So what is this rejection? For example, if any organ that we are transplanting, for example, if I want to go for any organ transplant, either river transplant, either kidney transplant, so and so. So if I want to go for organ transplant, if I'm taking, for example, I'm taking human, human liver, I want to transplant that. So whenever I'm going for transplanting of a human liver itself, so my body recognize, my body immune system will recognize so and so organ as a foreign body and our immune system will start reacting against that, such that that will go into rejecting of whatever the graft we are taking. So if you see in this heterologous uh, transplant, we are taking the organ or tissue of another species and we are introducing it another species. So because of this, there is possibility, there is high rate of possibility of rejection, mainly to decrease those high uh, possibility of rejection. So there will be some genetically modification that will be done by using RISPAR technique, okay, SAS9 technique, right? So here 10 genes out of this, four are inactivated. So one, okay, out of this four, one which mainly uh, focusing on triggering of aggressive immune response, okay, aggressive immune response. 
so this immune response which mainly seen after this transplantation so if you if you're talking about further more details two carbohydrate antigens they were eliminated by removal of two important genes that is cmhg and as well as beta 4 gel gene of pig here so this will help to maintain human sized organ okay so there are two carbohydrate antigens they will be eliminated so whenever we are, re we are removing this uh, this uh, genes for example cmh and as well as beta 4 gel genes so they will be helpful mainly to maintain human sized organs and in addition about six genes six genes were inserted to further reduce the risk of rejection okay so i said about what is this and uh, what is this graft rejection right so mainly to reduce that risk here there are further more six uh, human genes were inserted and two human complement inhibitor genes that is cd46 and ssdaf so the two human anticoagulant genes that is epcr thrombomodulin and two human immune modulating genes cd47 and ho1 they were inserted here an experimental drug is also given to recipient okay recipient means the person who is taking that organ so in that recipient also there will be the immunosuppressant sense that will be given okay immunosuppressant means that will mainly suppress the immune system of that so and so person such that this transplantation will not be rejected and if you are talking about an experimental drug is also given to recipient to suppress this immune system so that this transplanted pig heart is not rejected but in 1990s okay if you if you go back to this 1990s as well it was discovered that all human immune reactions they were centered against one pig antigen okay so that antigen here is alpha gal gene so this alpha gal gene which mainly provides or produces an enzyme which in turn produces a sugar molecule that was also removed so because of this there is a high chance of reducing this risk of immune reaction that is leading to this rejection okay so this is the pro process which mainly used and if you're talking about what is the need of this xenotransplantation so if you're talking about the xenotransplantation about 4000 about 4000 people in us they received this human donor heart in 2021 in 2021 there are about 4000 people in us they mainly received this human donor hearts in 2021 but here the need is far more okay and even according to this health ministry around 0.18 million people around 0.18 million people in india they are mainly estimated to suffer from this kidney failures every year but out of this only 6000 6000 transplant they were carried in the country and it's about 25,000 to 30,000 of liver, tra liver transplant that mainly needed every year in India. But out of this, only 1,500 they are being performed. And around 50,000 people mainly suffer from heart failure. At only 10 to 15 heart transplant they were carried in, e in India each year. And if you're talking about whenever we are going for harvesting of organs from this genetically modified or genetically engineered pigs, then that will be having one important uh, uh, important thing because we can also come out of this challenge that is organ shortage and what are the key concerns so first important key concern here is medical implication this is an experimental surgery and brings with a huge risk of patient okay so if there is any organ uh, rejection is happening transplant rejection is happening means it will lead to the loss of life of that so and so patient and even well-matched human donor organs can be rejected after they are transplanting okay and if you see here we are mainly transplanting animal organs so here the danger is very much high and this one is animal rights so the experiment has also re-sparked a debate over the use of pigs for human transplant which many animal rights groups opposes so many many people who are uh, mainly the animal rights groups they are mainly opposing this and this one is people from this ethical treatment of animals that is a PETA okay people for ethical treatment of animals they has condemned the experiment it is unethical dangerous and as well as it is also leading to tremendous waste of resources as well and if you're talking about religious concerns okay so another dilemma which mainly emerges here is whether we can go for accepting of these animal organs based on their religious faith or not so this is the gist of this topic and I hope it is very much clear. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding rooster fights. It is about the super spreaders. 
So what is the meaning of super spreaders? For example, let us take there is a group of people who are mainly coming and meeting at a place. Okay, so let us take these are the people. So in this people, for example, let us take one person who is mainly suffering from this uh, coronavirus and he is asymptomatic. And there is a chance of spreading of this coronavirus to number of people here. So this type of event is called super spreaders. For example, Kumbh Mela. For example, election campaigns. Okay, and now there is rooster fights in this Sankranti season in AP. Okay. So this article it is important regarding health which mainly comes under GS paper 2 and now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail. So what is the context here is there is a rapid spread of Omicron variant that is seen here and because of this Omicron that is going to this third wave of this COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So even though despite of government which is giving many uh, many guidelines regarding how to control this COVID-19. So here the people especially in this coastal Andhra Pradesh they are going ahead for this three day rooster fights. Okay. And this rooster fight which mainly held in this Sankranti festival event. So despite the court orders and the directives uh, that need to be followed like uh, we need to uh, have some strict uh, precautions that need to be taken and we need to follow this COVID-19 related protocol and there is also strict vigilance is happening. So this blood sport now might turn to be the COVID-19 super spreader event and here in this event lakhs of people they are mainly going to participate in this rooster fights. Okay, in the hoary tradition of this rooster fights sharp knives are mainly fitted to the legs of two roosters and these birds these hens they were mainly engaged to fight okay till one surrender which mainly die till one surrenders or one opponent which mainly dies okay so here in this event there is also high stakes and as well as high bets are very much common and it is also estimated to run into crores of rupees and the bets not only include even money but it will be also includes beyond this money like agriculture lands houses, cars and even other properties as well. So by the main attraction which is a birds fights, it is also associated with the gambling, liquor trade etc here. Okay, so in this context of this present uh, rising of this number of cases of this coronavirus, so there is a concern from this public health perspective as most of the participants they are bread winners and as well as youth and thousands of people they are working in other states they have written the homes and as well as even the toll plazas on highways they are mainly uh, mainly having the several lines of vehicles but what happened so there are number of buses which are mainly led and the government which took some steps mainly to decrease the congestion of traffic but there is no special arrangement which is taken for maintaining of social distancing and etc here okay so what happened in this festival what are the customs and the, what are the traditions that we are focusing so they will become an integral part of the society but in the name of this festive spirit so we can't go for uh, uh, spreading of this coronavirus right so here we need to go for proper me proper controlling um, measures of this covid 19. so if you're talking about what is the need so the need here is the broader covid 19 related restrictions might will help to reduce the risk of overcrowding okay so this broader covid 19 related restrictions that we need to take and that will help to reduce the risk of overcrowding which mainly associated with these fights okay and it will be helps mainly to prevent the super spreader events so this is just of this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says inquiries help save money environment so here we need to focus on this inquiries that will be helpful from our gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and even we can study this topic under gs paper 1 under geography as well so now let us try to see context so as you all know INCOIS mainly stands for Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services. So it is mainly providing some timely reports and as well as alerts. Okay and it will be giving some alerts regarding forecast and the warnings to various stakeholders. So those stakeholders includes Indian Navy, Coast Guard, Shipping Industries, Fisherman. Okay and in this way this INCOIS which is mainly helping to uh, keep benefit for the thousands of uh, crores to our country. Okay. So this is the context and if you are talking about some facts regarding this INCOIS. So INCOIS it is an autonomous organization. INCOIS it is an autonomous organization which mainly comes under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. And this INCOIS which is mainly located in Hyderabad. And this INCOIS which mainly established in 1999. And it is one of the important unit of ESSO that is Earth System Science Organization. 
So this Earth System Science Organization, which mainly operates as an executive arm of Ministry of Earth Sciences for its policies and programs. And this inquest is also mandated to provide best possible ocean information and even advisory services to society, industry, government agencies, scientific community, especially through sustained ocean observations and there is a constant improvement through scientific systemic and as well as focused research. So this is the gist of this topic and I hope it is very much clear. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding government talk on marital rape in delaying tactic. So this article mainly talking about this marital rape. So this article mainly talking about section 375 of IPC. And we need to know about what is the exception regarding this section 375 of IPC. So actually this section 375 of IPC which mainly talks about rape. Okay and there is one exception that is marital rape. So if you say context it mainly says that union government mainly holds that Delhi High Court is hearing Delhi High Court is hearing a batch of petitions on marital rape. Okay. So union government told that Delhi High Court which is hearing batch of petitions on this marital rape that a consultative process was under the way to bring amendments to this criminal laws and even women rights activists they say that consensus building it is an issue is only a delaying tactic and that their hopes are pegged on the court so this article especially saying that uh, now delhi high court which is mainly going which is mainly hearing the cases or petitions regarding this marital rape and that is a consult that a consultative process was under under way to bring some amendments here so because of this now women right activists which mainly says that what are the consensus they are mainly going to build here so this is a one issue which is mainly uh, which mainly going for delaying of this uh, delaying tactic here okay so now let us try to see some more important details it mainly says that court is hearing multiple petitions and these uh, cases which are mainly challenging section 375 of ipc there is one exception okay exception regarding this marital rape so exemption mainly include forcible sexual intercourse by a man with his own wife from offense of rape and which mainly provide that wife is above 15 years of age so whenever wife is above 15 years of age whenever the husband is going for the sexual intercourse then that will comes under normally here whenever there is a forcible sexual intercourse is happening that will comes in a marital rape and this marital rape which mainly excluded from this uh, section 375 of IPC. So what happened recently one affidavit in the court which mainly said that uh, said that it is in the process of making this comprehensive amendments in this criminal laws and that it has invited suggestions from chief prince of all the state governments, union territories, chief justice of India, chief justice of all high courts, judicial academies, national law universities, bar council of India, bar council of all high courts, members of both houses of parliament here. Okay, so they are mainly asking some suggestions from all these stakeholders. So now let us try to understand what is section 375 and you can appreciate what are these ex uh, exceptions. So if you are talking about 375 section of IPC, so this section which mainly provides a definition of rape. So what is this definition of rape? Under this man is said to commit a rape who had several intercourse with a woman under certain circumstances. And this section also specifies the circumstances like against her will, okay, like against her will without her consent that will come under this rape. And if you see this exception, exception mainly provides that sexual intercourse by a man, sexual intercourse by a man with his own wife who is more than 15 years of age that will be uh, not comes under this section, section 375 that is under marital rape. So if we are talking about court judgments of 2017, the first one here is Nimesh by Bharat by Desai versus State of Gujarat in 2017. Gujarat High Court elaborately dealt with the issue of this marital rape and the court stated that making wife uh, rape illegal, okay, rape illegal or an offense will remove the destructive attitudes that mainly promote this marital rape, okay. And because of due to non-recognition of marital rape as a crime, so court mainly said that husband is liable only for outraging her modesty and of unnatural sex but not under this marital rape. And this one is independent thought. Independent thought versus Union of India 2017 case. 
so says that supreme court has criminalized sexual intercourse with minor wife okay supreme court has criminalized this uh, sexual intercourse with a minor wife aged between 15 to 18 years but supreme court mainly refused to delve into the question or dealt with the question of this marital rape of adult woman while examining the section exception to this uh, section 375 of ipc so if we're talking about what are the challenges that we can see for criminalizing of this marital rape so first one is there is no proper eyewitness so no one knows that whether husband he is going for the sexual intercourse against the will of woman and this one is there is also threat to life so it will further increase as a threat to woman's life by her husband and her in laws as well and this one is institution of a family so mostly husbands they get protection in the name of marriage right and as well as the marriage it is one of the important institutions in india and this one is society and mindset so right from police to judges society mainly structured in the manner that uh, that they are mainly against the marital crimes marital rape related crimes this one is false cases so dissatisfied angry when full wives might charge their innocent husbands with the offense of this marital rape as well and there is increasing the burden on judiciary as well so due to the near impossibility of proving marital rape and the false cases its criminalization would only serve as an increased burden to the already overburdened legal system so already judiciary so which is having number of cases there is increasing of pendency of cases and if you are going for this also means that will further leads to pendency of cases okay so these are some important articles that happen in today's newspaper and i hope you understand this so before seeing the explanation of uh, last class questions so let me make a small announcement on this platform so if you want to clear upsc i will strongly suggest you to join the courses that we are offering our Rathod's eyes that is prelims test series main answer writing course foundational course and also individual courses so in this prelims test series we are providing 30 tests which mainly includes both csat and as well as gs and if you see in this mains answer writing course so mains it is one of the deciding factor whether your name will be there in the work finalist or not so don't take don't take this course as a choice so here we are giving you the micro listing of topics and weekly targets so based on that weekly targets there will be daily one mains question will be given and there will be evalu evaluation and as well as we will be giving you model answer and also one to one mentorship and this mains answer writing course will become very much handy to write your mains answers because within three hours of time you need to answer 20 questions now you can imagine you will be getting just seven to seven and a half minutes to write one answer and if you're perfect in this answer writing and you can nail this upsc for sure and this one is foundational course so we are providing entire foundation course for gs and in this course we are providing more than 700 hours of recorded lectures okay and we will be providing you related pdfs or the class notes and as well as there will be uh, there will be like uh, there will be like concept clarity will be compulsorily and 100% we are focusing on this concept clarity because the recent trend of UPSC has been changed. They are not asking fact based questions but they started asking analysis based questions. To answer those analysis based questions both in prelims and as well as mains, concept clarity is very important and that we are maintaining in our Rathod's IES. So if you take this entire foundation course, we will be providing you prelims test series and as well as mains answer rating practice for free. And the course uh, cost here is just 60,000 okay, for one and a half year. And next one is individual courses. If you want to take individual courses like economy, geography, history, science and technology, environment and ecology, disaster management, you can take some individual courses as well. Okay, so prices of these courses are also very, very less. So you can check out the prices and you can take these courses. And the main answer writing uh, series uh, course batch that will be going to start on the first Monday of February. So please try to join that course that will be exclusively beneficial. And if you have any queries regarding these courses, you can call to this number 8074765513. And I'm the academic director of this Rathor's IS and you can 100% trust us. And if you want to talk to me directly, you can call to this number. Okay. And the details of this course are given in description box. You can see once. And if you want to watch demo videos, you can watch three demo videos in each and every module for free of cost. So you can watch those. Okay. And if you want to download the app of Rathor's IS, link is also given in description box. 
And now let's come back and let us see explanation part of yesterday's questions. So first question is regarding west flowing rivers. West flowing rivers which mainly contains very less amount of silt due to fast speed and it cannot make delta. Actually you know you know that this west flowing rivers they are not going to form deltas but there is estuaries formation. So this first statement is correct. And second statement here is rivers arriving into the sea with high tidal range will not form deltas because the changes in this tidal areas will wash away the sediments brought away by the water. So tide means nothing but whenever there is increasing and the fall of the water level. So whenever the increasing of water level means <coughs> what happened that will be removing of uh, sediments that is present. So because of this there is no formation of delta. So the second point is also absolutely correct. And third one here is the western rivers mainly flow in the fault region which mainly created by mountains of Vinyas and Satpuras. They are mainly rocky and they mainly divide off any alluvial material say this so there is no delta formation so this statement is also absolutely correct so here you need to identify correct statements answer is three one two and three <coughs> and next question here is consider the statements with respect to ganges drainage system and peninsular drainage system that is between himalayan and as well as peninsular drainage system so peninsula rivers mainly bear exception of flowing through rift valleys like narmada and ganges rivers have no much feature but here this narmada which mainly flows in this fault region so this statement is absolutely incorrect and all peninsular rivers are characterized by fixed course absence of meanders and no and non perennial flow of water but here here one river which is in the peninsula river, peninsula river which is a perennial nature okay here the extreme word here is all so if you take if you if you see this all none so you have to be very much careful so these are some extreme words so this statement is also incorrect so correct option here is for none and next question is regarding heat waves so heat waves adverse impact occurred mainly in northern and eastern region of india yes it's absolutely correct and this one is severe heat waves comes under this natural calamity just like cold waves but it will not come so you can eliminate this so you can eliminate the option which is containing option two so correct option will be one and three so in this way you can go for elimination method so i uh, recommended to declare a region as a severe heat waves affected region if temperature reached beyond 45 degrees centigrade yes this statement is correct this one is it is a natural calamity which is found in tropical regions and not in temperate regions but this phenomena can be seen in both tropical and as well as temperate so answer will be one and three only so these are today's questions the first question is regarding itcz so during monsoon season itcz that is intertropical conversion zone which mainly shift up to 25 degrees north latitude over indian subcontinent while rarely crosses this 15 degrees north latitude in other regions so what is the reason behind that so first one is vast land mass in of eurasia located to the north of equator so first statement it is it is mainly located north Second one is intense low pressure which is mainly created over this northwestern region of Indian subcontinent and over the vast high altitude of Tibetan plateau pulls this ITC towards northwards. And so a shifting of westerly jet streams to the north of Tibetan plateau at the end of the month of May. So these are the three statements you are given and you need to identify the correct statement. So please try to read the NCRT and try to know about what are the factors which are responsible for this monsoon then you can easily answer this question for sure and next question here is the frequency of cyclones is lower in arabian sea when compared to that of bay of bengal but recently what happened there is increasing of cyclones in arabian sea than compared to that of bay of bengal so normally it is one important concept that you need to remember and this is detailed written in your ncrt as well so first statement is arabian sea surface uh, temperature is higher compared to the top Bay of Bengal and next one is the Bay of Bengal receives, receives the remnants of typhoons originated in this northern western Pacific Ocean. Arabian Sea receives remnants of cyclones from Bay of Bengal. So these are the three statements and please try to identify the current statements. And next question is regarding production and reserves of copper in India. So this minerals is also very important. So first statement here is Rajasthan has the largest reserves of copper and also have the highest producer of copper in India. India is self-sufficient in copper production. It's also uh, at the times it has also exported copper to the countries like Japan, South Korea, etc. And third statement is production of copper. It is a tedious job, especially in India 
as a copper ore mainly found in India as it is of lower grade compared to that of international grade of the ore. Okay, so these are the three statements and try to identify the correct statements and let me know your answers in comment box. So please try to answer then you will be getting the boost to solve much more questions and that will also improve your confidence. Okay, so by this I'm concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And don't forget to enroll to the courses which are given in description box. And if you have any queries, please try to contact us and the number is also given in description box. By this I am concluding. Thank you so much.